two. two. Yeah, I'm Viops and... I'm Terry Tibbers. No. Sorry, there's a speed sound problem. I believe you could listen <laughs> to my introduction. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, if you've been watching the ads, you will see that there was the Hunter in the House video done. Please go and support it. Go search for Hunters in the House on the YouTube channel and yeah. watch, watch me perform. No, I was right there <laughs> in every single scene, if you didn't notice me. Yeah. Of course, with more hair at the time, but I was actually right there in every single scene, working yeah, very hard. As a papa, right? Yes, as a papa. papa. If you actually know this video, you will know that was me. <laughs> <laughs> and also, for in the league, we could see that Juhuti is actually going to get married to Ellie soon. We hope to see a wedding celebration, <laughs> maybe in the next in the league. They're actually going to buy the suits, the wedding, the gown. That'll be very interesting to see. Yeah, I'll, I'll definitely, definitely be there. I'll definitely be there as well. You all want to be there as well. We <laughs> invite all League of Legends players. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, moving on to some of the events we're going to have. Mm -hmm. If you have you've seen the G Olympics, which just went live of late. So the period will be from the 27th of July to 13th of August. And summers from Singapore and Malaysia so will be pit against each other to set their first ever nationwide League of Legends records. So. These are some of the few categories. Yeah, uh, the, so there are five, actually five categories, which is the highest kill in the games, highest number of assists, most number of million kills, most goal in game, as well as the winners of the shortest matches. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So and the prices, right? The top two prices uh, category for uh, for each category will be like exclusive skins, like the penalty mode, um, Scorch Earth Seraph, Mythic Casopia, which is going to be released soon. And those prices for 4 until 10, you guys don't worry, you will get uh, walk away with uh, 10 win IP pools as well. Right? So for any other prices like um, Room Page, RPs and Champion to be won. So uh, make sure yourself join join uh, the G Olympic. And for more, for more information, you actually can visit to the LL um, forum. There actually, there's a thread there. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the rules and regulations be stated there on how you be able to win in all these things. So do take a look at it. Mm -hmm. And next moving on will be the season two qualifiers, which just ended for Malaysia for the Central Region just yesterday. Mm -hmm. So Skill Hunters, of course, came out first. Yeah, I shouldn't say of course. I did. I something sounded a bit <laughs> bad. Anyway, <laughs> so actually, they did actually did perform well mm -hmm. during so, that qualifier. Yes, and we can yeah. see that for the Singapore qualifiers. Qualifiers, the showdown starts on the 18th of August, 2012. I was going to say 2012, I don't know why, you know. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it starts on 18th August, 2012, which is, of course, this year. And it'll be a one million, two, oh sorry, 2 million USD prize pool for the World Championship. Mm -hmm. And winner of the Singapore Qualifier, just like the Malaysia Qualifiers, will fly to Vietnam to play at the Southeast Asia Qualifier. Yeah. And Razor will be sponsoring peripherals for the winners, and there are very little slots left for the registrations. For those of you who are very interested, you all should definitely, definitely join in. Mm -hmm. As there are, there are a lot of places, a lot of uh, things to be won. The first place will be 700 Sing dollars, a trip to Vietnam to play. And the runner ups will, first and second runner up will be, and third runner up will get some razors, peripheral t shirts, and other Keyboards, items. Mouse, mouses, mouse pad. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, so you all should definitely take your chance and try to beat Singapore Sentinels. Like all those who try in this Malaysia qualifiers to beat KL, KL, eh. KL Hunters. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> you all should try to beat the Singapore Sentinels as well. I mean, pick your chance against them, you know, show your skills. You never know, you might be recruited. Hemi is looking for you out there. So slow that sound effect. Anyway, I, uh, <laughs> not not quick enough in supporting me. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, moving on to uh, I guess going to go to the game right now. Going to see the champion selections. Going to introduce picks. the teams a bit later. The band and picks will start. Mm -hmm. So we'll take a look at the teams later. Uh, we're going to see Kualin play today actually, and BB will not be joining us. So we'll be so next ABC. Mm -hmm. So instead of playing support this time for Mystique, he'll actually be playing the AD carry. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so we're going to switch into it and going to see the picks and bands and later on we're going to let you see Carlin's cute face which is wow. Vyok's sweetheart. You actually can see okay, actually TPN ban a god. Mm -hmm. I believe they don't want to use it but I believe that the Jace patch, hmm, was it Jace or Zaraf, Zyra patch actually nerfed a god. We made the changes to him. Oh, so many patches that have been released lately. I'm totally... I need to read that up. <laughs> no, cause in, I know in the upcoming patch, they're going to revert a god into how it should be for his Acid Hunters. It's going to make it back to how strong it should be because the new changes to him made him very, very weak. And you do see the Shen taken out, which is almost 100% banned for yeah. almost every single match. Most of the matches. <laughs> Even for the Century Region qualifiers mm -hmm. for the Malaysia side. Yeah, in almost, South I and North. almost uh, out of 8 games, right? they actually Shen been banned. Yes. The top band. <laughs> top band. Yeah. And we see Nocturne being taken out as well as Twister Fate. I believe Nocturne is being taken out because uh 
uh, EPL does play quite the good Nocturne and mm -hmm. at the same time I believe they're going to choose a lot of uh, targeted CCs for TPA side yeah. so Nocturne's darkness will be able to cancel all the CCs for happening so that's why they might want to take it's it up It's a very wise choice to actually ban Nocturne and um, KLX's second ban will be Twisted Fate uh, Well, I see most of the game that actually ban Twisted Fate? Because mm -hmm. to my knowledge, KLH, uh, I mean, they know how to use Twisted Fate as well, mm -hmm. and, but so does TPA. But overall, Twisted Fate not normally ruins their setup because the top lane and our bottom lane for KLH, as you have seen, actually like to be more aggressive and Jion actually charges in to try to get yeah. the kills and double kills. Yeah. So sometimes it may lead to Twisted Fate being the ones to gang them from behind and end up being double killed back. So this <laughs> is something that we definitely want to remove. One of those very troublesome global mm -hmm. ultimates to almost global ultimate so to speak yeah. to deal with one of the larger range ultimates but we still call it global range because it's very far yeah. most of the time and you do see Ari being taken out as uh, our own Goldens does play a very strong mm -hmm. Ari and lastly and Alistar being taken out which little boss actually did play very well with Alistar <laughs> that CC that he always did is wow yes, you perfect. can't believe that <laughs> yes and the comeback win which you all saw previously a few matches ago for TPA against uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, SG, Singapore Sentinels, how Little Boss actually saved the whole team. Yeah. <laughs> I killed everyone with off that with Tiny HP and one. He got Ace for that rise, I'm not mistaken. Yeah, he got an Ace. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and we see that the first pick actually going to be bad. We have been taken down. So I believe it's going to be top lane for Stanley. Stanley. Stanley is very famous for playing Badmir, Nidali, mm -hmm. those uh, um, Cannon. Those cannon. Yeah. I mean, I mean, more famous for would yeah. definitely be Nidali and Velamir. Yeah. Those are his strong picks, his mains from what I've read from his own interviews. Facebook fan page and his interviews. Yeah. yeah. So I believe it's going to, we're going to be able to see a very, very strong Velamir later on mm -hmm. played by Stanley. And we and do see. We do see KLH uh, has picked up more fight and as well as the uh, Israel. Mm -hmm. For Jayong? Definitely, uh, definitely for Jayong. Yeah. I mean, we have seen in Century, in Century Region qualifiers yeah. and other games, Jayong has been practicing his Azure quite a bit. Mm -hmm. Gonna move out from his Cockmore vein and cocky, so to mm -hmm. speak, because a lot of people have played against him, plays against <laughs> that, so they do know his style. Yeah. So it's time to switch around a bit, you know, play give a different, different. Yes, give them some surprise. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think you can see uh, TPS have already locked down Ash. Yeah. Uh, Ash is actually Jenna. Yes, I believe so. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. so and, we, and we do see that, uh, from what I've seen, you know, I've actually stopped Mystic quite a bit with his online streams because a lot of my friends ask me to watch it. Because <laughs> when he does do solo queue and things, he does play support at times, he does play the AD carry at times, and he does play Ash as an AD carry quite a bit. So I believe that's one of his favorite AD carries to play. Mm -hmm. Maybe he likes the Hayatsu Sentien. <laughs> <laughs> well, but actually, he, uh, he trained Ash, I mean, Ash, can he, the the utilities is very good, like slow, that stuns. So it can do a lot of damage, actually, especially with Janna, that extra damage from the shield. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, but it's going to be very hard in overall, I suppose, because. Ash does have a problem saving herself when she's alone. <laughs> yeah, <quite true. laughs> as you, as an Ash player, would know. Yeah. Every, every time I ask me if it's a blind pick, should you play Ash? I would say no. Yeah. Every yeah, time you, know. you allow me to play Ash. Oh, man. Because Ash, you know, you fight against a very high mobility champion or bruisers who are able to rush in into you. I like, mean, Nidali, Lee Sin, Javan, like Malphite, <laughs> all those things. You know, they'll be able to decimate, I guess, crush the puny Ash almost instantly if she's alone. <laughs> Yes, yeah, just poof right there. Yeah, so gone. that's why I, I, I personally know Ash is a strong AD champion, but it has to be played with very specific lineups in order mm. for her to do maximize the damage mm. overall, of course. But sometimes it's quite difficult during um blind pick. Mm -hmm. yeah, but this this is fine because this is you can see everything there. Yes, you can see the yeah. draft happening. And we and can see that uh Hagane taking the Blitz Crank, uh, which is what they've been practicing so far, yeah, which is the Blitz Crank mm -hmm. as real combination, where you're mm -hmm. gonna pull the opponent towards you, they're gonna be able to run the CC, the damage going down all together with the Ezreal pokes yeah. is very, very strong. So mm -hmm. even with Janna, Janna without his ultimate is not gonna be able to save Ash. Uh so I think uh, I think early uh, advantage will go to Gamish, I mean for bottom lane uh, because for the of the Blitz Crank as well as the poking for uh Ezreal. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. uh, so there's gonna be something to see, to see whether this lineup that they're practicing is gonna work out. Cause yeah. if you've seen Mystic does know does play a very strong blitz crank as well. So maybe he does know how he should dodge every single thing. And maybe counter back? <laughs> oh, who knows? <laughs> yes, who knows? And you see Morgana actually not being taken out this game, being picked by Golden's right there. Gonna play against 
Valenville actually with this lineup that's going on right now and you're gonna see last week Nautilus and we're gonna see Shirana and Olaf being taken by TPA mm. actually playing a very aggressive team in terms of charging in most probably gonna be able to protect Ash in the sense where Shirana with the Dragon Form is gonna mm. fly in Olaf is gonna open his ultimate and just charge into wherever he wishes to kill with his reckless swing yeah. and everything as, as he's gonna be able to counter almost every single CC on Gaunter's team Olaf is one of those strong champions, so we're not going to see Van Mill as a top player. Most probably, Olaf is going to be what Stanley is going to play. Yeah. As you can see, he has taken the Ghost and Ignite as a summoner spell, so I believe this is his champion of the oh, day. Or maybe this is also the secret training from TPA. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm not sure, but I would say that Malphite against Olaf. No, I think Malphite is going to be, yeah, I definitely think Malphite is going to play against Olaf. Malphite is going to be the top lane, and Dawn is going to use uh, Nautilus as the jungler. And with his ne recent nerfs on Nautilus, he has a longer cooldown on his Q, the dredge line. Mm -hmm. And his second skill uh, does less damage by a bit, I believe. If, if, it's, if it's not the E, it should be the W. The shield and the AoE damage is being reduced quite a bit because it's getting a bit too strong in the mid to late game. So, but overall, his CC is still there. Just so yeah. it's going to be very interesting to see what happens. Because Shyvana can definitely counter jungle uh, Nautilus quite easily because she has the ability to clear up the jungle very quickly. Mm -hmm. And also, to be very aggressive, going to be able to move out very safely from Nautilus as the early damage from Nautilus is very, very weak. He needs to reach under level 3 and above to be able to dish out enough damage to actually hurt someone, so to speak, without help of the allies. So, I believe that uh, Little Boss was going to be very aggressive in the early stages for yeah. this, for this line up. Overall. I heard the voice from Kelhane <laughs> And for those of you, for if you're in the Grand Lord office, every single match you're really hear the Kelhane's chanting right there, it's going to be very strong. So, so it's going to be very interesting to see how they fare out. Overall, in this composition so far, in terms of CC-wise, I would mm. say that uh, Kel Hunters Kel is, is definitely very much stronger. Yeah. Initiating ability is, rare, is right there. It's going to be very interesting to see how TPA takes this to, to, uh, to be played, so yeah. to speak, because for TPA side, they have the ability to charge in for the Val for Valamir, for Shyvana and Olaf and Ash with the help of Kolalin playing Jenna will be mm -hmm. able to stay back behind and slowly poke people down from getting into range because the only person that will be able to charge in definitely will be Malphite's ultimate yeah. and I have Flash from Morgana to go in Blitzcrank's pool most probably not be so easily hit on Ash as they mm -hmm. have a lot of tankers to stand in the front yeah. so it's going to be interesting to see so I believe you're going to see Ash runes from TPA Mystic Right there, he has taken cleanse as well, the summoner spell. He has been not been playing AD carry that much in the GPL at all. So we're gonna see it is something different, but nope, it's gonna be the standard of AD carry. For AD carry build of 16 yeah. AD, 13 armor, as well as flat magic resist per level. Not going for attack speed, but for more uh, tankiness in the end late mm. game against spells, which is something that uh, AD carries get burst up quite quickly. So take a lot of masteries, going for anything special. I believe it's going to be like more utilities. Maybe because of the damage, I think he's going to spam on the his uh, W. Nope. Okay, actually, see, actually went for more tanky build right there. See, oh, wow. he actually took off two points, you know, not taking full uh, vampirism, which is the lifesteal right there, and also not taking the last point on the offensive tree for the 4%, but actually taking two points in indomitable. Yes. We're going to actually reduce damage taken in the mm. trades at the bottom main right there. So, so it can sustain longer. So it can yeah. sustain longer and trade hits wise with the help of Janna Shield, mm. it will come out much, much stronger, I believe. Yeah. Yes. And moving on, I'm going to see actually uh, Stanley's runes because he actually plays very random runes at times, but it's going to be very similar or the same. Wow, we actually see half regen per 5 at, oh, at level 18. And half regen per 5 quintessence and Magic resist, flat magic resist, and flat physical damage. No armor at all. Fighting against a Malphite. Hmm. Quite interesting choice. Actually, going to be focus more on regenerating health. Yeah. And let's take a lot of masteries. Going going for the defensive one twenty one eight right there, buffing the ghosts and ignite at the same time taking the magic resist against Malphite definitely, and. Taking less damage overall. Going to trade. Going to aim to trade hits and spam his, his spells as much as he can with his ability overall. So this is definitely going to be something interesting to see on how Stanley actually plays this out. Yeah. Because 
I would never have thought of that. You know, when I, when I do play Olaf, I would mm. think maybe I'll go for zero twenty one nine because I'll need to go for maybe extra tankiness so I can sustain the lean longer and use my reckless swings more with more of some, also getting on the HP regeneration points. But you can see that wow, totally different <laughs> rules <laughs> by standing overall. Not Early game, even in half regeneration minus, mm. it's going to reach about fifteen of regen per five, yeah. I believe. With the runes around, around runes there. Runes is 8.1. Runes 8 8 1. level, the one. Yeah. It's yeah. going to be about, going to be, wow. And maybe he's going to go for regrowth pendant. And <laughs> what the health <laughs> pot. As you did see him, is there for fist. I mean, but I don't think he's going to do that because, you know, Olaf does need, doesn't have the ability at face to jump mm -hmm. away. So yeah. it's going to be quite interesting to see how this plays out, the top lane against the Malphite. Because Malphite is just one of those top lanes that's very hard to fight against. So now the game has actually begun. We're going to move in. We can see that everyone's clicking on the items so quickly. Just at the 7 second mark, everyone has already gotten all their items needed. Except for Malphite. Actually going for a regrowth pendant and a pot. While well, Olaf is going for a boots and three pots, not going for the regrowth pendant. And we're going to see all the pings going down. Sharana going to aim to take the raid. And so is Nautilus going to take the raid first. So I actually asked Dawn about this. He said currently jungles favour taking the raid first. Where no matter what jungle it is. Why? Because uh, after you take the raid, the raid buff mm -hmm. with the extra damage you do per second mm -hmm. uh, and also it, it's going to be e much easier for you to clear the wolves and the blue oh wow at the same it looks time looks like it's going to have a the height so as oh. she gets caught no oh, dog oh, oh he flashes flash. away there goes the caught going on while wow, there <laughs> getting oh, all the grabs going oh, on Mystic getting blood. caught the first blood flashing out and now Mystic has been taken out exhaust are going out a very strong fight Stanley going to be taken down right here he has a pop his ghost here it's not going to fall out going to be just fine no problem at all this clan going to try to charge him for the pool once again nope no. I think it happens there and now they know they have the advantage actually going to move out to try and steal the blue but at this time I believe that uh, Ash will have enough health but Olaf is going to go back to heal definitely cause his health is taken down to quite low they're going to have enough time to move back yeah. and J was actually teleporting back did he get the first blood? no he got the assist and the, oh, the, <laughs> the first blood goes to Hagane. Hagane wow the beast crack <laughs> the beast <laughs> crack right there and see actually Hagane being very aggressive he actually went for boots first and side wards not actually go for the, the more traditional build of the early wards uh, fairy pendant and yeah. one health pot instead going to be aggressive in a sense that he wants to make sure he gets into range to be able to pull whoever he wants to pull especially if Janna you can see right there without the boots it's going to be an easy target for yeah. base crank so this is going to be very interesting to see right now as Hail Hunters did a very good job in the first initiating fight and the gang right there and Olaf chose the X to see what's happening but nope not going to be able to go not going to go in as they're going to choose the op to play safe right there nope yeah I guess we'll move, move back to the top mm -hmm. lane and we see that uh, Dawn has successfully stolen the blue and seemingly teleporting back to base. Yeah, I think so. Because he's staying there. Oh no, no he's just taking the time to clear all the creeps. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I think Nautilus is very slow in clearing creeps, what? so it's just one of his weakness. But you can see a top gang gonna come very soon. soon, right there. And now bottom is just gonna be the farming fest, so to speak. And we see Olaf being being extra cautious, knowing that after the blue is being taken, he could get ganked. Not gonna show his face too early. Just gonna hide in the brush. Get the EXP and slowly, slowly farm later on. Oh, and uh, actually, Little Boy has been moving to Kale Hunter's um, uh, blue, blue buff. Yeah, stealing their blue buff. <laughs> and Hagane knows that and he moves in to check and does catch the little balls right there. Is he gonna pull him to make sure he does not run away too far? Nope, he oh, actually uh, misses that. <laughs> I mean, Little Boss does have the early boots and mm -hmm. Ash Rana most probably gonna have the extra MS from the masteries as well yeah. but from the utility so it's going to be quite hard to catch her at the maximum range oh, oh wow. wow i'm I, i'm not sure what what has happened <laughs> at top lane top. but we did see that even though like uh now fight was having a, a advantage in the cs but i believe that Ola took the advantage where Malphite didn't have the boots and threw his swing his axe and did normal hits and swing his axe against and when he got level 2 the reckless true swing damage. the true damage so now Malphite did the damage we can see right now a fight going on JLB a bit too aggressive we're going to use his flash and are going to go knock up the ash right there going to trade hits so right now the bottom lane has been a fair advantage in terms of both flash of the AD carry has been used so it's going to be quite interesting this, how, to see how it ends up later on Yeah. But what, did you see this one? Uh, actually, Kelly has to ping the, their move. No. 
that is uh, that is actually TPA pinging the wolf saying that they saw Nautilus walk past. They know that he's going to the bottom lane. You see, they're, they're pinging that right now. Well, I think Top is going to have a game soon from Taiwan. Yes. Oh, Union Boss actually going to be very aggressive. They need to go back to base here. Knowing that, yes, knowing that Malphite no longer has flash, I believe. Yes, does not have the flash, does not have boots at all. It's going to be a very easy kill. Like targeting Monkey right now as a top laner, mm -hmm. as you should know, as you would know, you do play top lane quite a bit in the past. Yeah. But without the boots, you're very successful to the gang. And as Malphite, you have no ability to run away mm -hmm. really. And his flash is used up. They really took a very took advantage of it, knowing huh. that he couldn't dodge the axe from all last first ability. So right now TP is actually back into the game with the goal league heading all there but slightly just by a bit. 400. 400, yeah, so good. It's interesting to see how Monkeys actually comes back from this. Now he finally goes back to buy the pots and the wards, so it's going to be very hard for him to push back as now Olaf at the same time does get his Philosopher's Stone and does his now Magic Mental up, so it's going to be take less damage overall for Malphite's abilities. Mm. So you can see that uh, TPA actually playing very safe right there, going to try to dodge these Krang's grabs no matter what. And we can see that they are actually doing very well coming back into it. The CS difference is slightly an advantage of Jayon of course, just because of uh, this with the, with the with the fear of this crime in the bush. You don't want to move up too close, too far to get some of the CS because you're going to end up giving the opponent a free kill. Yeah, that's why. That's why I hate this kind of move <laughs> most of the time when I play any carries. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, looks like um, Sally has been quite very aggressive at the top. Uh, he doesn't have the ward, but I believe he's because he still have his ghost. His ghost is right up. It's gonna be very hard to because what uh sorry what Don needs to do is to land the hook first, mm -hmm. and definitely Stanley can use the ghost to run away from the hook against the monsters. And we can see that Stanley being very aggressive. The reckless things comes down. Going to take up tons of health for Malphite right there. Mm -hmm. You can see a kill going to try to go down. No, uh, mistake. If the class gonna be able to be safe, gonna take away ignite and see. Well, Stanley did a good job in dodging the stretch line right there. They're gonna be moving on quite safe. Well, actually, gonna move back to the river of reckless thing. Gonna be more aggressive after they know the gang has failed. And as Olaf, you know, with less health, gonna be able to do much more damage yeah. with your passive, your normal hits. And of course, with the the uh, HP region. Runes, yeah, yeah, he has no problems at all. Gonna stay in the lane and trade hits. I can see the little boss is gonna be waiting right there. And uh, oh, the what? Yeah, and Kelvish does not, and we can see little boss is gonna walk into the bush. And uh, Domery knows that, that's why he actually went back to the back. Gonna wait for Shyvana to come out before he actually goes in to try and pull him out. And we can see that he's actually gonna walk into each other right there. And the one actually, no action. I think oh, wow. it's actually a bad decision making right there for Monkeys. He still doesn't have the boots. Exhaust goes down onto Don right there, and Don flashes out, but the Ignite's gonna take him out. Morgana's ultimate comes in the nick of time. Gonna be able to take on this boss, and right now they're gonna move on to Olaf slowly as he did pop his ultimate already. Morgana's just waiting for the right time to bind him, and then nope, that's not on cooldown. Still on cooldown. Yes, is he gonna be able to dodge it? The slow goes down, the bind oh. goes down, and there goes a very, very great dodge by Stanley right there, getting out. Of that fight safe. So it's actually a one for one exchange, but it's in the it's not so good trade for KL Hunters so far in my opinion. Because if they did take down Olaf, it'd be great. Because Olaf right now does have three kills. Yeah. It was very much in the kill to get get the gold advantage back to either the top laner or the mid lane Morgana. And since Morgana did leave the lane so very much free farm quite a bit, gonna be a bit aggressive, gonna try to push to the tower. He does have the right now he does have a bit of higher CS rate and wow well, being very aggressive. One of Morgana's uh, weakness though is against against another pusher. If he does position himself very well, he's not gonna be able to actually land his line and the opponent's not gonna be able to not be go, sorry, not gonna be so wary about that. Yeah. Not gonna have so much fear on it. Yeah, so we see that TPS is slowly building up onto the advantage by taking these small goals. I mean it's just slight advantage. Kel is still doing very well in terms of the port lane and the mid lane as well, training hits. And Morgana and both forwards pushing back the lane trees back, just not as fast as Melanie of course, because she needs to rely on her third ability. Oh sorry, the second ability, the pull, which takes quite a bit long time to pull down. Instead of Valerie's ability, Tides of Birds, I believe, is gonna be has a much quicker cooldown. Yes, Tides of Birds. So Oh, so look at bottom farming. I mean, Ash is uh, like what we can see now. Uh, Ash has been, been doing quite well as well, even with one death. Mm -hmm. But he still managed to farm up with his uh, the crit. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. You see that he's, he's, when he's making sure that he, when he farms, he does not get caught. Yeah. So he's standing in very cautious position. So that's why, in terms of, as you can see, this farming right there for 
Jill is much higher, but it's one good thing of one one great thing is that when the, when you know that Blitzcrank mixes the hook, you should be able you should be more aggressive to yeah. try poking him back. Because the hook cooldown is very long. In the early stages, if you do not get cooldown reduction, you draw as you go leveling up, which is normally not the case. You will not love the third ability, the fist, so you better to knock people up much more often. Wow, look no at toys, how aggressive he is with Vladimir. Mm -hmm. You know, if uh it's already level 8, so I believe that he can sustain even more battle with his um Hextech Revolver. Yeah. And his Ascendry uh, uh, oh sorry, and with his uh Transfusion as well. So you see Monkey is gonna be put in a very bad position in my opinion. Gonna opt for 2 GP5, he's not gonna get a boots. And we can see that wow, uh Stanley, after getting the kills, is gonna opt for more health and more regeneration. Gonna rely mainly on his true damage mm. overall. If someone does come to gank him, he's gonna have no problem to fight back. Yeah. Double Doran shield. <laughs> and one thing about Blitzcrank though, when he reaches level 6, if he does stand out to be too aggressive, Wow, that was what kind of what what pool was that? <laughs> wow. Anyway, <laughs> they tend to be more aggressive because of they want to push people away from the creeps. But at the same time, when they do stand in behind the creeps of the opponent's creep minions, mm. his ultimate is gonna slowly proc and diminish some the health. It might steal some of the CS on the AD carry. See, there goes the lightning. <laughs> As you just speak, spoken right there. Yes, stated. So it's gonna be right now. Hagani is really gonna land a pool. Yes. Nope. I suppose mistake is going to oh, be the top. best dodger at least because it does no Actually, we see Dom Wing, the true damage going on for Olaf. Truly, true damage right there. Taking down Dom Wing almost in an instant. And now, Fight still in the free right there. Here comes Morgana, the ultimate and the arrow. Ash arrow missing just slightly right there. And here we see Golden is able to take down the little boss, but Stanley is right now on a rampage. Taking it's a 2 to 1 trade. Yes, 2 to 1 trade yeah. right there. And right now, the raid is going to go to Olaf. Going to push Malphite back even further mm. after this. I, I believe that, I mean, we go Pendant and a Hellpot is a viable build, but that's if your opponent does push you a bit. Too. You know that you're going to stay safe, play a bit more safe, not push mm. out too far. So you're going to go for the early GP5, but you're going to have to play a bit more safe in the early stages. and. I believe that a uh, monkey's just played a bit too aggressive for this in the beginning. That's why I got the kill from Olaf. As well, as he does use his ability to get a movement speed buff using his seismic shot, and right now we see a gang, a fight oh, on gang. Yeah. So here's a gang happening. And you're actually going to dive and how the exhaust goes down, but it's going to end up with just about the same HP amount of trade. And GM a bit low on mana, not going to be able to continue his skill shots. Skill shots, but it's going to be, but he wants to clear the creep wave as soon as he can. I believe wants to go back to base to buy some items. Maybe soon. And you can see Vladimir knowing how to play against Morgana, actually gonna be more aggressive, gonna try to push the creeps as fast as he can and just do his best to dodge the buy from Morgana. Mm. And you can see the little boss gonna get ready for the gang at the bottom. And we can see Toys as we mentioned just dodge the buy from Morgana, gonna use his ties and ties of birds and transfusion to continuously push the name very quickly. Not gonna let the creep stay at the inside of Morgana's pool for a very long time. And we oh, see the, that wow. They take the advantage of bottom lane. Um, yeah, moving back. Moving back, back and mm. just get the first three dragons. Lord Maltus is right there. He's gonna try to steal smite. I believe we're gonna see him walk in, open the shield, and while wow, TP actually stops the dragon right there. Gonna be able to take the kill of Dawn on this. He flashes away with the help of the shield. Not not gonna be able to oh, get geez. away. And the dragon goes to Shyvana. Right now, monkeys comes in a bit too late. Uh, they're not going to be able to catch it. Oh, there Whoa. goes the ultimate right there. On to Janna. Kali being caught out of the fray. The ultimate is not going to be enough to save her. Jion does get a kill. So it's not going to be wasted for the teleport. As a top tower, I believe it's going to be taken down by Olaf. Being very aggressive. Getting the kills. Getting the CS. The assist. And then you can see right there. This Olaf. Getting Ionian <laughs> boots. And, she, and with the blue buff. Going to maximize his cooldown. I'm going to pick up the X and trade one more time. Instantly clearing the crit wave. This is one thing I... I love about Olaf is actually, you know, if you do it very well, you time your access very, very good. Mm -hmm. You have no problem clearing creep waves, slowing the opponent all the time. And with the true damage, it's like, what Whoa. are you going to do? It's like, <laughs> I think it's about five to four seconds cooldown right now because it's like he has blue buff and his ironium boots. It's going to be devastating. I'm going to see the X miss, going to pick it up and trade once more. Yeah. Yes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Thought Muffin's gonna charge it. And yo, here we see the plans used by Mistake. Gonna cleanse off the Ignite, but not gonna take off the exhaust. Jayon being very aggressive right there. Charging through the first tower to take the kill of Mistake. Doing a very good job because they knew that Janna was still dead and walking back into mm. save, into helping her. But Jayon once again using up all the mana for his aggression. Gonna be quite unsafe if Sharana does gank. He has no ability to move back. <laughs> but he says he does not have his flash as well. 
Oh, so, so, they're going to move down to bottom lane to... Nah, but I mean, after taking the tower, they're going to move back. After mm -hmm. the tower, the crit wave, they're going to move back. And Sharon, if she does come, she's not going to be able to do that destroyed. much damage to just the Janna. Unless the Ash arrow comes from the base and definitely gets the kill right there. You see that the top tower has been taken down and the Nautilus is going to try to move into the gang, trying to help monkeys right there. You can see, oh, there goes the slow. Tons of damage. There goes another slow right there. It's totally too OP to have fight against Whoa. Olaf. If you really cannot sustain against him, do a lot of damage against him, it's gonna be very, very hard. Yeah. Well, can you see what did Stanley do just now? He's just staying around the tower and walk around and poking and... Because mm -hmm. he has no fear actually, he has goals, he has ultimate. He can actually run away from all the CCs that the team has. And we can see the battle actually being right, he's gonna charge him right there. The yeah, Sanguine pull the exhaust, wow. wow. Totally taking down the kill all to Golden's right there. And Little Boss tanking the tower he's like a strong. boss, gonna take down the mid turret as well. So two ter two towers has go down for KOH and one for TPA and right now the bottom lane doing very well overall in terms of the CS, the kills as well as uh, the tower being taken down. We can see that Jeyong does have his Shin. Gishin and Fish both taken down already. Soon, very soon gonna be able to complete the 24s and while she's gonna give the blue buff to Ola. This is one of those things I like about choosing a non mp Wow, Danny actually missing the Poke right there after Dombori uses his ultimate and we can see that this is going to end up in a very bad position over with DBA and Delphine does carry the monk yes, monkey's ulti lands and right now Jeyong trying to poke from afar he has much damage but it's not gonna be enough and here Jeyong now being chased down wow Whoa, the quarter kill what? from the <laughs> <laughs> toys Price of oh my that did like that did tons and tons of damage right there like Ezio had like quarter health right what? there I, I seriously, I can't imagine with that <laughs> spirit is such at that um, almost complete away ancient can do this. I mean, I mean, I mean his tide of bloods must have been fully stacked right there, and as an AD carry, you don't have that much MR. With the spell play, Shoxor's boots taken down, it's gonna be very, very painful. And no one to save him right there, it's uh, just gonna end up bad. And here you see Stanley being the boss he is right there. Not gonna be afraid of any gang, gonna move out, no problem. See, one of those, I was mentioning earlier, one of those things I like about choosing a uh, AP mid, mm -hmm. so to speak, that does not need the blue buff. Yep. Actually, can transfer the advantage to either the AD carry or the support or the top laner. Yeah, any of any one of them who really need it. Mm -hmm, really need yeah. it. And they pick both two characters. Does not need the blue buff, which is Shaimana, mm -hmm. as well as uh, Vladimir. Yeah. So they're gonna always give the blue buff to Olaf, and Olaf will have no problem continuously throwing axe. Throw axe yes. and just walk in front like a boss. <laughs> yeah, and they look at Olaf. You can see he has complete his uh, warm up with within 60 minutes. Yes, we need 16 minutes for Toti, Toti. Wow! And we can see Toys there right there doing damage. tons and tons of damage no matter who his target is. Actually getting Abyssal Scepter and Sorcerer's Boots actually now gonna have about 50 spell magic penetration right there. And we can see while wow, Stanley gonna be the boss, gonna be able to throw X again, gonna throw it soon and again, and again after picking it up, no again. problem. This is... And he's gonna throw it over the wall maybe. No, gonna be... Or use his ghost. Oh, we see the we see the sh wow we see everyone everyone is there right there. Monkeys has nowhere to run. He's gonna try to teleport. There goes the axe. It missed oh. so slightly. It's gonna be ah, safe. Just nice. Just nice. If the axe did hit, well, fight might have died right there because the shield just came up at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And Olaf, as I was thinking about Olaf, his first skill of him throwing the axe, his base cooldown is about seven seconds, I believe. If I'm not wrong, but if you pick up the axe, it actually it's reduce like the cooldowns by like five seconds. Yeah, it's and we have Ionian boots and blue buff, it's like yes, hundred yes. percent cooldown after you fix it up. So no, no problem at all. Yes. And we can see the fight gonna go on, and we can see everyone's right there trying to take up the Olaf. But Olaf having the wall walk with the two Duran shields, it's gonna rush it like a boss, gonna kill everyone right there. Gonna be afraid of anything. We can see. He's gonna move on to Jeon right now. Jeon being too aggressive right there. Gonna, he does get the kill, but now you know, little boss and all is moving right into him, and there goes all the kills. Triple kill on the bear, you know, and the ace, ace on Olaf right there, taking down Ezreal. And it's gonna be a five for two exchange, and we can see that the bottom lane not doing so well. Mm -hmm. I mean overall, but they did help on his team fight with the correct amount of CC taken, and and, and the, the positioning, the positioning is very well, yeah. And overall, the burst damage reliant on Shyvana. Olaf and Vladimir going to be very enough. You see the overall CC wise that uh, KLH does have the advantage, but problem is that against Olaf that means almost nothing. nothing. Yes, and Olaf being able to farm so fast at the top lane, 
it's really going to push KLH very far, far behind after this. Yeah. And you see that right now, Toys has 10 kills and 3 assists and 0 deaths. With 212 CS. Yes, and we can see, oh! Instantly buying a death fire <laughs> grass right then. Gonna push up his cooldown reduction to 25% and with the masteries of 4%, 29% out there. Wow, gonna have no problems at all. And now KLH knowing that they lost the fight up there, everyone went back to heal. Gonna try to take the dragon and push their gold, the gold loss into a better position and we do see the dragon being taken by KLH right there. Mm. You can see, well, Ash <laughs> moving in like a boss, but KLH not gonna engage onto this because they know that Everyone else is moving into there. position, gonna yeah. try to gank into him. And here comes Toys, and here oh. comes the arrow aiming onto the wild Hagane, standing there alone, and then taking the kill on Hagane. I think that was not a bad way to run because mm -hmm. if Hagane did stick with other, other champions, the Ash arrow comes, it would be the stun and the AoE slow so onto everyone. It might clear on, I mean, be able to clear yeah, the whole team for yeah. KLH right there. Because we were thinking this like Stanley, you can see the health bar have is like. <laughs> <laughs> totally right, no problems. <laughs> <laughs> and Olaf, being a high damage, high sustain champion overall with his second skill, Red has no Red problem Red at all doing whatever he wants. Oh, As he pieces right there, he chose the axe, they're gonna move in. Can you see just dodge again? Yeah, he's doing a very good job yeah. in dodging the skill shots as well. You can see that. Like before, he's he's like been dodging most of the skills since the beginning. Yeah, skills since the beginning, yeah, yeah. that's why. He has very strong mindset on how to dodge the skill shots and how yeah. to follow it into the hook. Like even really for me, the top link gang for Dawn, I would definitely aim that area because most people are going to rush in there and get panic. And we can see right now, Golden's with the Zonia yeah. and the Ultimate going to try to catch them off with Dormovi's Ultimate all together moving in but no, the damage output from Toys and Olaf is just too much for them to take. Yeah. And wow, there goes the triple kill and Ace right there. And the Quadra oh. kill. Oh. What this? Second quarter kill. Is it? Yeah, it's a second quarter kill. Second time. I thought it was a triple kill earlier. And the double kill for No, it's a, first time it's a quadra and triple and... Red that was a quadra. quadra as well. And we can see that TPA... <laughs> showing to be the very strong team, the Titans right there. Yeah. Using a team that really does have very much less CC but very strong damage output overall on the team. It's not going to be afraid of the heavy CC team that KLH has chosen instead. And for those of you who who watched the Century Vision qualifiers, we have known that this was one of the few lineups that KLH did use and it decimated their opponents in the matches. And we can see that wow, TPA doing a very good job in countering this everything right there. Well, Sharana diving in, Toy is diving in right there, and we can see Olaf diving in as well. We're gonna take all the kills as they can, not any problem at all. And when Stanley comes into the fray, you can see that JL has to fall back. Well, actually, you can see the uh, the team come from uh, TPA. They actually have sharing the damage from towers from for each other. Mm -hmm. Like I take one to hit that, you take one to hit that. Yeah, they they move the, them to dive the tower. Yeah, when they dive the tower, they do a very good job of distributing the damage mm -hmm. being taken. Not one person tanking it at yeah. all. So it makes them more easy and to take down. And look at the damage done on the Stanley by the towers. <laughs> like taking only one hundred HP at a time. So Which no is a little. <laughs> A little HP for yes, for little, them little. only. Yes. Yeah. Wow. Oh, this. then there goes a steal from um, TPA again, the blue buff. Yes, the blue buff is going to take it because uh, Olaf is going to take the red buff right there steady. So, going to be buff hungry, inhibitor being taken down overall. It's very bad. Wow, how can I go be a boss going <laughs> to try to fight this Olaf? I think it's a very bad that choice. Yes, please yeah. pull back. <laughs> <laughs> I fear for your life, you know. <laughs> Wow. Oh, that's like, like um, Red, Red has really completed his uh, Donya. Yes, yeah. wow. And he's not even complete his view of the Ancients right yeah. now. You can see that, well, yeah. he did not need it at all. With the speed, we say she does get about the same amount of regeneration, so to speak, a bit more. So definitely, sometimes it's a better choice to take. And it does make a tank here against mm -hmm. spell damage as well. Yeah. Also, like, um, Mystic has really taken down the blue and from there he can actually keep on spamming his volley. Mm -hmm. But we can that, see that oh sorry. With that huge damage. <laughs> Quite huge damage. <laughs> you can see Olaf's gonna tank the Baron, they're gonna take the hits, no problems at all. <laughs> it's like are you you're, you're scratching me. <laughs> yeah, but Kara has it's good that he's at turn walk turn the walk at the Baron and they know that uh TP is actually doing the Baron. So, but no one is in position and the Baron goes out too quickly for them to respond. And one thing good you can see that Coralin knowing that they do not need the Shredder, 
against mm-hmm. against the uh, uh, KLH because they will be the ones who dive in to initiate definitely mm-hmm. and with the composition they have it's gonna not gonna be a problem right now as they have the tankability and damage being dealt out she actually went for Zeke's carrot mm-hmm. right there boosting the overall damage from Ash, Shaivana and Olaf wow. that makes that making the whole team much more stronger much more what they need right there I can see right now Mystic trying to poke anyone that he can so ultimately goes up and hits Don't worry, as he does have his the spell shield for Morgana right there with his bonus especially into the ulti but not going to be enough and you see a triple kill again by yes. <laughs> And it goes to the ace for KLH. It goes to the ace on uh, for KLH. Oh, sorry. For TP onto KLH, I'm a bit, I'm a bit amazed how TP played this out so well. They took advantage of the top lane not having the early boots and everything. You know, bottom lane was being pushed a bit hard in the early stages by the the, the whole build of this yeah. clan as you. But the top lane and mid lane was doing very well. Mm-hmm. Overall, the the the, I'm sorry, the like the pressure was right yeah. there. The Sharana knowing that. Uh, Olaf, I'm oh, sorry. Knowing <laughs> 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 that Malphite did not have the boots, going yeah. went to help Olaf to take the kills, and wow, uh, totally amazing right there. Making the correct decisions, putting why TPA is standing on the top. I mean, our own Kel Hunters definitely is not mm. a weak team, but mm. I mean, this composition that we're trying to have is actually very strong overall. Mm. They've been performing well, well with it. But TPA came out on top because they knew what they was needed, what needed to be done in order to counter all these things. Yeah. And very good job overall. So right now, we're actually going to move, move into to the, the score scoreboard. screen. Yes, yeah. going to take a closer look. And wow, we can see the end game CS on Taurus. <laughs> and the kills he has. with zero death. And 10 assists, oh. almost there for every single fight, except for the top lane, I believe. Because yeah. the total amount of kills that TPM has is 30. And we can see that, wow. wow. Look at TPM, he sticks his acid is 21. Mm-hmm. Mm. Using his, his <laughs> ultimate as opposed to supporting very far away in the map. And overall, the goal difference is at large in this 24 minutes game. We did see the TPA took every single advantage they get the mm. Baron, the kills, the towers, totally pushing KLH back. And I, I'm, I'm very amazed on how, how well TPA did. I thought, I thought KLH would be able to do better this game mm-hmm. in terms of the team composition. But we, we, have, we have seen. Uh, TPA with the burst, with the high damage ratio, and ability to ignore the CCs with the Sanguine Pool, Aura's ultimate, and Shyamalan's ultimate. It's and the timings, everything the timings engagement is almost perfect. Yes, it's yeah. very perfect. You can see that this two weeks break as well as make TPA into a much, much more stronger yeah. team overall. So, wow, I, this, both games were very fantastic. You could see that both did very well. First game for the SKL MLE versus SGS, and the second yeah. game for TPA T- versus KLH. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They definitely both, all, all four teams did a very good job. But as in the competition, they can only be one winner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a cruel, cruel, cruel fact. fact. <laughs> yes. And also, so we're going to move on for the question of the day, which is what most of the viewers have been waiting for for the 300 free Garena shower cards. Can we have the image up? Yes, yes. so we can. So before I review the questions, just going to go a bit onto the rules and regulations. Right, uh, so the, uh, how to win this challenge? As you say, winner will be announced on the Facebook. So please stay tuned on the Facebook uh, questions. And the shower will be credited on the following Mondays after the weekend. All right. And the contest is only open for the summoners on the Singapore and Malaysia server. Yes. Yeah. And so the question of the day is, which will be posted on the Guyana League of Legends Facebook fan page is, which GPL player would you date and why? Yox. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so once again, which GPL player would you date and why? That is the question of the day. So to everyone, if you're interested in getting these free Triangle Guyana shell cards, please do tune in to the Guyana League of Legends Facebook, Facebook fan page. Yes. Mm. And so, Vyox, do you have anything to say to your fans out there for your first uh, appearance onto the camera? Well, actually, I'm quite a camera shy. Yeah, no doubt. I'm going to slap you <laughs> and punch you with you know, some brutal performances to make you not so well, shy. Well, sometimes I just like, uh, don't know what to say, you know. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to move on to next week's schedules as well so you all will know what to anticipate for the upcoming week so for on August 3rd on Friday the game will be the Saigon Jokers against Mona Eagles and the second game is going to be Bangkok Titans against the Taipei Assassins right so for August for the August uh, the first game will be KL Hunters versus Singapore Sentinel which I believe most of the player is Interested on this yes, match? An anticipated match as rivalry between Singapore and <laughs> Malaysia yeah. has been has been on the run since 
the gaming period in yeah, the beginning in for, the like, for GPL. a lot of other games and also in GPL yeah. overall. So for the game two, it will be Bengal Titans and Saigon Jokers. Wow. Well, actually, sin sincere in my heart, right? I do hope Bengal Titans win their first game. Definitely. For, for this week. Yes, everyone, I mean, I mean for, for the following week, yeah. for the coming week, everyone does really hope for it to see that happen. Yeah. I mean, Bengal Titans is putting a lot of effort into mm -hmm. the games. But you can see that falling a bit short in overall, sometimes the composition and the overall uh, placements and positioning, but overall, it's just, and their skills, they're actually doing they're actually quite good. Yeah. yeah. Right. So, for the last game, uh, last day, uh, will be first game, Kel Hunter versus Manila Eagles, which I believe we are currently at the same score, right? Mm, yes, it's currently yeah. at the same score. Right, so I think this is the game that uh, we can see who will <laughs> perform better. <laughs> so to speak, and yeah. so for the last game of the of, the, of next week will be Singapore Sentinels against Thai Happy Assassins. One of the most anticipated matches mm -hmm. I believe for everyone, where the two giants will face off once again to see whether Singapore Sentinels will be able to step up on the top for the first place mm -hmm. of the GPL yeah. for the upcoming week. So do stay tuned for all these matches coming right up. I believe all of you are excited as well. We have the season two qualifiers going on. And a lot of things are going on. The IPL where Singapore just went, I believe, not long ago. They have been left. Done, redone. Really yeah, really. No, I mean they have left to initiate. Yeah, yeah, all the competitions going on. So I hope you all stay tuned and continue to support us, so we can bring you more fabulous events, especially for GM Vios. He's all the planner organizers. <laughs> so if any problems, I am not. <laughs> I am not. Uh, I'm not included, uh, you know. Me, me, me uh, go away, go away. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so uh, thank you all for watching the GPL for tonight. I'm so sorry I couldn't bring a Timo, but I did bring. Uh, I don't know, some people call me Timo in. I don't know why. Timo this, this the bus? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. I'm not sure why shaving my hair is yeah, After, Timo, after Timo. the Singapore, I mean, after the Central Region qualifier, actually, those people start to call you as Timo Tibus. I have no I'm, idea why. I think I know why. Why? Because of the cuteness of. Oh. Mm -hmm. Seriously, every day right, I come here, I was like, want to touch your head, you know. Okay, oh, let's sorry. move on from that. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so definitely, we'll go, so still stay tuned for next week's yep. GPL. So I am Teddy Tibbers. And I'm Vyas. So we'll see you see again you next, week. next week. Bye.